The last thing that I kind of wanted to talk about is there's been this is all being reported by the Athletic, by the way. This one, the Rudy Gobert, um, Atlanta Hawk rumor that's been going on. Somehow the Atlanta Hawks seem to be the favorite to get Rudy Gobert right now, and an offer that kind of actually got mentioned was Clint Capella and DeAndre Hunter. Straight up, those two players for Rudy Gobert. Just Rudy Gobert. And the way the Hawks would apparently go about this thinking is, is Rudy Gobert is a obviously much better defender than what Clint Capella is. And they think that he would actually work better with um, Trey Young. And again, add that more defense to the team. I'm not sold on this though, because I think on Yekka Okongu played really solid basketball towards the end of the year. And I think there is a better team that you can send Clint Capella to if you really want him gone. Surely there would be someone out there that would take him. For example, if Oklahoma don't land a center in this draft or whatever, let's just say maybe they get Chet and they want to play Chet at the four. Capella would be interesting for them. Houston, I don't know who they're going to play as their guaranteed center unless they're going to roll Christian Wood and whoever they take at three is like the forward center duo. There'll be, there surely is a team out there that would be in the market for a center, right? So I don't feel like this is necessarily something that needs to go down. The Charlotte Hornets, right? They're a team as well. They need a center. So if you really want to get rid of Clint Capella so bad, is Rudy Gobert the guy? Like, wouldn't you just play on Yekka Okongu off that bench? I would go, yeah, I would I would uh, just develop a Neki Okongu. I think uh, what he's shown in the second half and in the early parts of the playoff is definitely what they needed. I think, uh, and I think he's 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 more relatable for Trey Young. Reason because he understands his role. I think that's kind of what the issue they was having with John Collins. He just didn't understand his role. I think that's a player they're gonna end up trading this off season. Yeah, yeah, I can say that. But uh, I think I think they stick with a Kungu because I think. Uh, I feel like they can find a lot cheaper rim protectors uh, than Rudy Gobert. Now, for the Hornets, though, I think that would actually be ideal. Getting Clint Capella? Yeah, getting Clint Capella or Rudy Gobert. Um, They might not have the assets to trade for Rudy Gobert, but they definitely would have the assets to trade for Clint Capella. And I can just see the pick and roll with uh, him and LaMelo. And then they got those two, like, uh, not P.J. Washington, but, uh, but uh, oh, my God, what is this? Their wings, My- like Miles Bridges? Yeah, Miles Bridges. And you got Miles Bridges and Clint Capella literally crash into the – like, you literally got two lob threats. Like, because we've seen what Clint Capella does in a pick and roll situation with Harden, right? Mm. But then we've seen what, what, <laughs> what Miles Bridges does – in a pick and roll situation with Lavello, so that would be dangerous. And I then you have so a too. legitimate rebounder in Clint Capella, like who's who at one point was like what the second leading rebounder in the league. So yeah. that would be that would be a huge upgrade from Plumley, and a more durable upgrade from Plumley. I think the Hawks could get a good deal out of this too, though. Like imagine, I still think Mason Plumley. I think as a backup dude for the Hawks would actually be a nice backup, you know? Play 20 minutes per game off their bench. Um, help on Yekka Kongu out. Um, you could possibly bring in a protected first or something like that. I think could definitely get the deal done. But yeah, you're right about John Collins, though. Who, do, who does he get sent to? <laughs> That's a million-dollar question. Because I think he got we a lot were, of value. We were hmm? really interested in him. Do you remember that? Yeah. I re- yeah. Now we Lucky got Evan Mobley. Mm. <laughs> yeah that, that was low-key that was yeah like you said that was a blessing in disguise that we did because the money he ended up getting and <laughs> and you know because I think John Collins is in a weird dilemma where he feels like he's a number one option player I think he's like like how KP was like he thinks he's a number one option player like he he wants 20 plus touches a game mm. but it's not a lot of teams where he's going to get that as a power forward. Like yeah. he's just like, he's, <laughs> and especially like he, like he got moves, but he's not like, like he's not like a Kevin Durant or a Giannis or, 
or even uh Sabon like you know like even those yeah. type of pop chords like that's that's a tough ass I'm like it like it, uh-huh. I was about to say I wonder if you're if you're the paces do you look at a dude like John Collins but who you trade though I mean well the Hawks could always look at Miles Turner it would be an interesting option. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I like Onyeka Okongu starting there. But I don't know. Maybe Buddy Hield and something else for John Collins. That'd be an interesting option for both teams. That would have been intriguing, though. That would <laughs> the three-point shooting would be crazy. Yeah. Hawks would have Trey Young, Buddy Hield, DeAndre Hunter, um, Danilo Gallinari, and Onyeka Okongu all in that five. And they, they need to give Gallinari a go. I'm sick of Gallinari not getting minutes in the NBA. It's honestly one of the things that I hate. I don't get how Gallinari went from an 18-point-per-game scorer in OKC starting <laughs> to yeah. coming off the bench and playing 18 minutes a game. And when he yeah. does play, he plays really good. He Why is up. he on the Hawks team coming off the bench? It hurts my feelings a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Poor bloke. Yeah. I don't know. He would be cool to start. I would like him starting again. And it seems like the Hawks like him more than John Collins, low-key. Yeah, because he understands his role. Yeah. I think that's a problem. Like, I think if they had more players that understood their role, I think the Hawks – because I think the Hawks actually got a better team than a lot of people really credit to. But they just don't understand – well, John Collins just don't understand his role. And I think it Mm. messed up – lot of the mismatches they have because they can really kill some teams offensively like especially if Trey Young is there and doing what he does like he can really create some tension but it's just I think it I think I think they're not progressing because of John Collins yeah but I would like to ask you though like because I know you said you know you stated that OKC if they not if they don't necessarily get the power forward they want do you think OKC would uh, have some interest in John Collins? Ooh, I don't think so. The reason I don't think they would is because, honestly, I used to think Oklahoma, they might target this player in free agency, that player in free agency, this and that. But they don't seem to want to do that. I think for the next couple of years, they're going to keep going to free agency and not bringing anyone in and not trading for anyone. I think they're just going to keep building the team um, year by year. And I think their owner's happy with that. And I think this year with their 12th overall pick and second overall pick, they will bring in their center and power forward. They will bring in Chet Holmgren. They will bring in Jalen Duran. Um, I think they'll bring in both, honestly. I think that that will be their mission to come out of this draft with both. Okay. Yeah. So let me ask you one more question there. Do you think Phoenix would try oh. to trick DeAndre Ayton <laughs> for John Collins? Wow, that's a good question. I think DeAndre Ayton's a lot better than John Collins. So, I agree. I think John Collins just gave up on Phoenix, which is not what you want. But yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one, but I think, I don't know, do you want to keep going or how do you want to do this? Because we got a minute left. <laughs> because, you know, uh, okay. Because I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think of everybody we talked to and just this, this see would you would you do would you do John Collins for Christian Wood? John Collins for Christian Wood? It's just once I thought about it, man. I'm yeah. like, I'm not gonna lie to you. I was like, yeah. Christian man. Wood for John Collins. Yeah. Dude, it, these are tough because, like, where where do you think the Rockets sit? Do you think they're gonna want Christian Wood long term? Honestly, it depends. Mm. It depends on who they draft uh, this year. Because what? Because they, uh, Jesus Christ! Now I gotta go back to that draft. What pick are they? They got three, so that they would could- most likely be Paola Bonchoro. I would think they would take. And he's a forward, right? So he's a power forward. Six foot ten, really big but athletic. I think he's more of a power forward that would lean over to the center position than the small forward. And they got another big out there that's like been making some noise too. Alfred Shungun. Yeah. So 
That might be intriguing. What, to I play just, I... Shen Gun with Ben Shuro or that's yeah. what I wouldn't I wouldn't assume they would go for John Collins then. I I think the Rockets team is weirdly it's not I don't know if it's weirdly built, but I need to see what KPJ is gonna be like because people were hyping Kevin Porter Jr. up again this year, even though he like nearly averaged the most turnovers per game. And was averaging like as many turnovers as he was assists at one stage. Hmm. So, do you need to find the point guard for the team, or is KPJ the future at that point guard position? And that's that's another question that we got to see. So, I wouldn't go for John Collins if I was them, because I'd like to see Shen Goon be their starting center. But yeah, maybe if they bring in Banchura, does that mean you got to get rid of Christian Wood? That's that's the, that would be the question. Uh, I think Christian Wood is going to be a question mark. Mm. And your first question, I do not think Kevin Porter Jr. is going to be their point guard long term. Okay. I think he's going to be like a, a situational point guard. A point guard for a jail same. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Probably right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because I don't think, I don't know. Because, like, don't get me wrong, he got a lot of time to develop, you know, because he's still a young player. He could, like, you know, it's it's very, it's been players who has statistically been worse at their position and developed into what they needed to be, if not better. But that is alarming. Like, when you talk about a player that's supposed to be a point guard, like a facilitating point guard, and he's in his assist to turnover ratio, is similar. disgusting. Mm. Yeah, like it's disgusting. I don't know if he should be point guard. That 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 tells you that he's wasting possessions, right? Especially since Houston's supposed to have this fast-paced offense that they're trying to implement, right? They're trying to get everybody running and gunning and all that. But you're obviously losing games because of his play style. Mm. Not saying he's the so Oh, they but... they need a new coach too, by the way. I am not I don't like their coach whatsoever. I think he's got some terrible players. Yeah, that's I, I, true, too. I, I, I can't bl- I, I'm not going to blame him, but I just think he got some terrible, terrible players. Through the wastelands, through the highways.